My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. Previously we designed and built the overall shape for the bodywork plug out of wood and high density foam. However the surface is very rough uh, with gaps and mislined edges. We are now going to cover the surface of the plug in hard setting bog, sand the surface and then paint it to pull the fiberglass bodywork moulds. First, before I started bogging, I added chamfers to the plug which the hot wire cutter wasn't able to do itself. This turned out to be quite easy just by using sandpaper and a sanding block against the foam surface. Then I started just adding bog to the plug piece by piece. There was a huge amount that had to be added, far more than I had initially expected. I think I used about 30 litres of bog during this process. I tested the bog on a piece of foam and found that it worked quite well, setting to a hard but easily shapeable surface just by sanding. I did a couple of sections early on with a minimal amount of hardener just to try and give myself time to work with the material, but uh, this turned out to be a mistake. Given time the bog actually ate into the foam, something that wasn't a problem when the bog set quickly. After this I stuck to using the correct amount of hardener which gave me a few quick minutes to apply the bog before it set. In areas where I needed something to be particularly accurate, such as the roll hoop cover, I printed off a template to test the shape. As I bogged each section, I gave it a bit of a sand just to get the overall shape roughly right. This was as much as anything just for morale. There was so much bogging and sanding work to be done that I just kind of had to do a bit of both at the same time just to keep some variety in the work. I was doing this mostly in the evenings after work, leaving the weekends free to continue working on the car's chassis. I bogged the tail of the plug because I thought that I would hold on to it after I was done, keeping it as a kind of souvenir. It wouldn't be used as part of any mould, but it would make it more aesthetically pleasing after I was done. I didn't realise how much damage would eventually be caused to the plug by pulling the moulds from it, and unfortunately I wasn't able to keep it in the end. As the finish got better and better, the less bog I had to add with each pass and the less sanding was required. Eventually I got to the stage where I was happy with the surface and it was off to paint the plug. I started by throwing a coat of white primer on the entire plug to seal the surface ready for painting. The MDF wood and bog would have soaked up the paint, so really it needed a good base to work from. The first coat went on easily and from a distance it looked quite good, so job done, right? Not even close. While I had thought the plug was finished when I started painting, the undercoat showed up a lot of imperfections in the surface that really couldn't be ignored. I spent about a week in the end, including Christmas Day, fixing problems with the bog uh, by repeatedly bogging, sanding, painting the plug and then leaving the plug overnight in the shed to dry. I should just mention the paint booth that you would have noticed. My father decided to put this together for this project and it was pretty amazing. It had a filtered vent with a fan on it which meant I could paint for days without really making any of the surroundings dirty. The process was much the same as when I was bogging and sanding the plug. 
only I was now looking for small issues like little potholes or scratches that would show up in the bodywork if I didn't take care of them now. I also looked for areas where the light showed a depression or hump in the surface which wasn't really visible before I made the plug shiny by painting it. My father attached the sander to the vacuum which was really great, no dust was released into the workshop while I was sanding. You would have noticed just how dusty everything got in my garage. This was something I really should have done a long time before this. Finally, once I was happy with the surface, I marked the split lines for the moulds and bodywork on the surface by measuring and marking with a permanent marker. I put a very light coat of paint over this, then used some very fine sandpaper to remove any bits of grit that were left on the surface. Then it was ready to make the moulds. Before any fiberglassing took place I had to wax the entire plug. I applied about 7 coats of mold release agent which had to be applied to an area then almost immediately wiped off again with a rag before it dried. After 7 coats the surface felt incredibly smooth to the touch, almost uh, like a velvety finish. I had ordered everything I needed for the moulds months in advance. This was one area where having a 3D model in SOLIDWORKS really helped me. I was able to take the surface areas of each of the bodywork parts uh, straight from the program. From this I was then able to get the length of the fiberglass mats that I needed plus the total weight of fiberglass mat. I was told that I would need to allow for about 20% extra resin by weight compared to the fiberglass, so multiplying the fiberglass mat by this ratio I got the weight of uh, resin required and was then able to get the total mass of each mould. This was my order list which I sent to the supplier. Acetone for cleaning, brushes and rollers to apply, MEKP catalyst which started the reaction which set the resin, gel coat to provide a tough working surface, the resin itself, then PVA and wax to help release the moulds. Finally, the fiberglass in two different weights. I used 225 grams per square meter as the first layer to prevent any chance of there being an imprint of the chop strain mat on the mold surface, then 450 grams per square meter to provide the bulk of the strength. These were the drawings that I put together for the molds. I did these so that I could put the procedure I was going to use in front of the suppliers I was talking to. That way I could get their input and feedback. Putting a plan like this in front of people is a really good way to prompt information out of them. I used cardboard with a very waxy surface to create flanges in the mould. In hindsight, I probably would have done this out of something harder and with a smoother surface like plastic or even a thin metal. Once the flange was in place, I sprayed a layer of PVA release agent over the entire mould surface. Next was the gel coat, which would end up being the surface of the mould. This needed about 40 minutes to become tacky but not dry. After that, the fiberglass. I would lay the mat on top of the plug using the tacky surface of the gel coat to hold it in place. Then I would wet the surface out using the resin and a brush, trying to remove any bubbles as I went. More layers of the heavier fiberglass went on after that until the mold had built up enough thickness. I did the nose and the roll hoop cover first. They were relatively small so it would give me a chance to learn the process. Unfortunately I was never really able to produce a mould that didn't stick very hard to the plug, even with the wax and the PVA. Each mould would ultimately damage the plug as I removed it, taking parts of the surface that would need to be removed later. 
I lost a lot of time chipping away the plug pieces that were stuck to the moulds, though it shows just how tough the gel coat surface is that I was able to use a sharp chisel to remove the pieces without damaging the mould. The nose was much the same. I'll admit that I got pretty tired of removing the foam manually from the mould by hand, uh, so I ended up uh, dissolving it into a gooey mess just by pouring acetone over it. After the nose and roll hoop cover, I did the rear lower undercut covers. This process was much the same, cutting the mat, mixing and painting the surface with gel coat, then laying up the fiberglass, wetting it as I worked. These rear undercuts were fairly straightforward, enough so that I attempted to do them both at once in one evening. I probably bit off a little bit more than I could chew there, I had to rush to keep moving forward before the resin cured and made it difficult to add more layers. I was not too bad with safety on this project, I only had one incident while building this car and it was while making these moulds specifically. I managed to pour some of the resin onto my leg, I dropped everything and got my covered clothing off but it had soaked through. Uh, it gave me quite a nasty chemical burn actually. The resin was incredibly unpleasant to work with, I used another type of fiberglass system for the bodywork using an epoxy, and in future I'd wholeheartedly recommend going that way even with the added cost. It was just so much safer to work with. I left the two largest pieces for last, the engine cover and the front cover. I wanted as much practice as possible before I started these two huge sections. I used only two layers of fiberglass for the engine cover. Its shape meant that the mould would still be quite rigid. The spine of the engine cover was a real challenge, the fiberglass really didn't want to bend around the sharp corner very well. I ended up folding the first layer over and continuing the second layer upwards on each side so that they met along a common face. This helped but wasn't perfect, there were still some air gaps left between the gel coat and fiberglass which would later cause problems removing the bodywork from the mould. Again I had trouble removing this piece, there wasn't much space to get behind it and wedge it off and its rigidity meant that I couldn't separate much at a time. Eventually it came off but it required a lot of material to be removed from the plug and it took a lot of the surface with it. Last was the front cover mould which would be used to create three separate bodywork pieces. The head shroud, the shock covers and the main front cover. This went much like the others though its large flat surfaces meant that I could easily lay up large sections of fiberglass at once. That was the last of the moulds, next we need to pull the actual bodywork pieces from these moulds and attach them to the car. There wasn't anything left to do with the destroyed plug which I had spent the last 6 months working on. It was off to the dump for a dignified send off. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it and want to see more. Also follow me on Twitter or Facebook where I'm uploading pictures of the build in a chronological order. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.